we're back. Here's our first victim. I only knew Greg briefly, from the summer that I took over the campsite and he retired. He seemed harmless enough, if a bit strange, living in that nasty little caravan. The hippie dude. As part of his official handover process, he gave me a big box of rule books that I was apparently supposed to give every camper when they arrived. Oh, I've got the look of it. I couldn't believe them. The amount of inches apart each tent had to be. The angle of pitch permitted colours of guy ropes. No skipping ropes, marbles, conkers or throwing games. No singing with hand drums. I built a huge fire on the beach invited the whole site for a big party and burned the lot. Good on you. But then, awkward, Greg showed up. I guess he'd been collecting some things from his caravan and came to see what the noise was all about. You could tell he wasn't comfortable, but he sat down and tried to make conversation. I told him how beautiful I thought Shelmerston was, and he started telling me all about the wildlife here and the best places to spot birds. Smashing. He was actually quite a sweet guy. You just burnt his real books. He must have noticed what we were burning, but he never mentioned it. That was the last time I saw him. I always felt a bit guilty. I mean, I got him wrong. He wasn't that bad. Well, that's a good thing she kept one of them. It must be around here somewhere. Got to get a real book. Where would a real book be? There it is. In a bookshelf, mate. Do 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 do. this about dogs having to be on leads the whole time? Mm, outrageous. Okay, we got that. We got... I'm getting the scent of Grenkins again, Morris. Ah, good old I'll Grenkins. Up to let you know when we're close to one. I've missed the Grankins. Smell <laughs> the Grankins, boys. How is you going? D yes, good question. Good question. This is a, a, what would I call it? Eccentric sort of game. Yes, I'm just getting up and you're getting ready for bed. Time difference is a thing. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's eccentric, all right. 
I'm going to the dentist today for a checkup. Just God forbid anything. He's not taking any of my teeth out, buddy. I'm looking. For, it's just a, it's one of them games where it's Anna Panuna is uh, is the makers of this game. They've made other games they've played. So you have to look. Yeah. It's not my favourite place, but I mean, I just try and forget about the dentist and uh, it's a fun play box. That's it. Oh, what's that? So you're looking for stuff and there's also these hidden things called Grankins. Well, I know, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely off the scale for weirdness, but it's kind of relaxing. In a strange kind of way. There's Genkins there already. Yeah, it's on PS Plus. Um, I still haven't streamed from my PC yet. <laughs> yeah, it's the music. Thank you. Yes, I was wondering. I can see, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. I know, yes. I, I have looked at the videos, but I shall get there, I promise. With a credit to yourself for the help. <laughs> There's a Genkin somewhere here. No, I can't get him. See, I haven't played this game in over a week, so I'm just trying to get my bearings on it. So, yeah, so did you have a good day? I'm assuming it's uh, like two in the morning or something, is it? No. There's definitely Genkins. Yes, 11 p.m. is plenty of time. That's usually when I go to bed too, actually, around that time. Sometimes I do be a bit naughty and go to bed at 12, but it's just something I'm watching. Okay, will you have a good sleep? And thank you, thank you for popping in, because this wouldn't uh, be my idea of relaxing, watching me streaming a weird game. We'll put you, I might put you to sleep actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. could, could do, yeah, actually, now that I think of it, it's a great time to, to, to look at this. <laughs> great. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, thank you. You have a good day, good sleep then. And I hope you don't dream of Grankins because they're little, they're not horrible looking, they're just. It's, it's a weird game. Okay, let's put it down. It's just a weird game. There's a gank in there, is there? No. No. It's definitely somewhere here. This is just the thing down the top, the bottom right there is the thing I'm looking for, actually. Yeah, it's coming back to me. It's the Game Boy, somebody left a Game Boy in the uh, toilet. Not very good of them. been too long since I've been away from this game. This is this is what I don't like about gaming. In other news, I finished Red Dead last night. Only after 81 hours. <laughs> and the longer I played it, the more I enjoyed it. Surely did. B 
be here somewhere. Is that it? somewhere else. Oh yeah, there usually is. To find these, I presume, I don't know. Look for the people first, the ones we're looking for. Forget about the Genkins. Yeah, I have to get back into this. This could take a, a session to get back in. for the people first. I just need to look for the other people. Shells running around. Here's one dude. He's a good dude, boys. Shell a racing fan. Get in. Miles and I came to Shelmerston for the Shell Cup final. Miles was the world champion for ages. Greg, the campsite manager, was a huge Scheller fan. Always gave us the best picture on the campsite. Scheller. A good old Scheller fan. Miles was up early every morning training for the big race. Greg would always be lurking in the background taking photos. It became rather annoying. How many photos did he need? Oh God, and one time he turned up at our barbecue and wouldn't leave. The man could not take a hint. Oh. So race day arrives and Greg is there with his camera, of course, getting in everyone's way. So Greg leans out into the track you as leave the Greg pack alone. came past, miles in the lead and Miles goes crashing right into Greg. Total disaster. Miles goes down and Quasi flies past him to win the race. Miles was absolutely gutted. He definitely would have won it. Later that night, all us shellers were on our way back from the pub and we heard Greg outside his caravan, just sat by himself crying. Miles, he was such a good sport, went over and spoke to him, invited him over to our camp for a drink. So then Greg came back and hung out with us. 
brought his camera and showed us all his shell erase photos. You know, that guy was actually a pretty great photographer. By the end of the night, Miles had forgiven him. Miles was good like that. Yes, he was. Good old Miles. Shellers. I never understood the appeal of that. Yeah, Seems he's a comfortable to me. <laughs> Poor old Greg. He was always rubbing people up the wrong way, but he meant well. And he really loved this place. Sarah Bird. Well, let's just. What's he doing? Sausages on the Barbie. Here we go. That's the right shape. Gotcha. There's a Grankin. Get in the Grankins. One of eight Grankins found. Don't need to see her again. <laughs> really centric. Interesting. Not that. See, 
here somewhere. There we go. Smooths into place. Two Grankins found. Get in, we're getting to swing of this again. I love camping. We've come to Shelmerston every summer with the kids for years. Okay, our tent is a bit bright, but that means the kids can always see it. Yeah, get in. Greg seemed angry about everything this year. He told us our tent was outside of the regulation colours. Oh, come on. And being Greg. around the kids seemed to really upset him. But they were only being kids just running around playing. Greg was blowing that bloody whistle every five minutes. Bloody whistle. One day, Greg confiscated my little one's kite. He was terrifying. We still sometimes get nightmares about it. Oh, God, I, I wouldn't blame him. So would he. When I saw Greg put the whistle down, I pinched it and took out the pee. You know, Ugh. the thing that makes the noise. No, yeah, good, good I for you. I threw that pea somewhere Greg would never find it. He should have seen his face when he blew his whistle and nothing happened. Oh, you cruel woman. <laughs> I always wondered how Greg managed to get so good at hand whistling. <laughs> sure you did. Let's go back and find the other table. It usually gives you a clue when you're... This is just weird. Big people and shells. Them dollies going around. Cricket bat. Stop the what? Slaughter, what the hell?
should I be? Oh, who she tells you? Got me stumped that one. Come on, Carly, you got this.
<laughs> this is Rick. Here somewhere. Oh, maybe I turn around. Stephanie Dare. Gotcha. God loves a trial. Three Grankins. Yay. Camera hidden away, not that hidden. Yay! Oh, I wish we could use this. I am a very photogenic dog, you know. So am I. Milk and beer, that's all you need. Now we've seen her. Nothing there. Nothing to see. Hmm, nothing there. Get in. Four of eight. We got to get all eight. Dodgy sausage. 
My bird sausage, boys. Hmm. Interesting. There we go, get in. My whole life I've dreamed of seeing a Jemson sea owl. One day, I read the news that a guy on this little island called Shelmerson had discovered one. I had to see it. I had to see the it. The only B&B on the island booked up really fast, so I decided to stay at the temporary campsite set up by the guy who discovered the sea owl, Greg Litherland. The atmosphere was amazing. There were twitchers from all over the world come to see it. Twitchers? Greg had given the owl a name, David Abrahams. A bit weird, but I guess he was the one who found it. And because it had no mate, it was lonely, and he'd made a model female owl out of concrete. That was quite impressive. I got to know Greg a bit during my stay. He really oh, seemed to resent all the noise and fuss this. on the island. Oh. His island, as he thought of it. And the irony was that he was the one who'd got everyone excited about coming to Shelmerston. Greg told us he'd take us up in groups to the Owl's Nest site, but I snuck up early with my camera. It saw me and it flew off hooting and I didn't get a picture. I was gutted. I had to make do with a picture of the model. It wasn't the same. Nah, never is. Never the same. Ah, I remember that. All those bird watchers suddenly arriving and nowhere for them to stay. I didn't think Greg had it in him to start a campsite, but he somehow pulled it together. Good old Greg. I don't want to get this one, I want to get the Grankin first. Where the Grankin could be. What's a beer going on here, boys? Freaked out, man. Oh, man, what's going on? Look at my pants on the ground. Look at my pants on the ground. This could be it. No, it's not here. Get in. Granking number five. I'm alive. in here somewhere. No, nope, that's not a Grankin. No, 
No drinking, Derek. Stephanie here. Do you know where the green thing could be? Could it be here? That's it. Granking number six. Okay. Two more to get. there. No. No grinking. Not a green can inside place.
look like? It looks like a... like it. Got it. Cranking number seven. Get all the crankings now, boys. Thank you, boys. New Grankins. That's just milk. It's 
not in the humans usually. The burnt sausage. The burnt sausage for my breakfast. Would expect to be here somewhere. But it ain't there. Hmm. Where's the owl then? My whole life I've dreamed of seeing a Jemson sea owl. Gotta be here somewhere. Boop. Give up on the Grankins. We'll have to see where they are. Where's the last Grankin? Gotta have the Grankin, boys. No Grankin there. Grankin. Got the last Grankin, boys. This is exciting stuff. Might be there actually. Look on there, no? No. Get in! Rankin number eight. In the gate. Let's go find the others. Miss Nell's now. Back around here.
you would imagine it's in D. In the haversack, wouldn't you? I mean, that's where you keep your creams of sorts. Not there. She's not there, boys. Cream there. Must be here. Can't be just. All these little things. <laughs> Yay! Get in P. Get in. Oh, the smell of rabbit poo. <laughs> it doesn't excite me the way it used to when I was alive. <laughs> the smell of rabbit poo doesn't excite me when I. <laughs> No, I've got that. Oh, here we go. Dish soap. Staring me in the face. There, that's it. Yeah, get in, get in. Got all the grandings, boys. Oh, poor old David Abrahams. There's, there's a, there's an extra one to find. Here 
see it is over there. Come on. My best thing is throwing discs. I am really good. I like playing with Dan and Toddler. It's our favourite thing when we go camping on Shelmiston. Shelmiston? One time, Greg Nifflin came up the beach all red-faced like an angry tomato. He pointed <laughs> at a sign. It said, That no is blood pressure, dear. Dimes. You'll understand one day. He was yelling it? and shouting at us. He told me to give him my disc, but I wouldn't. I threw it high up into the air. And it went bang into a massive bird. Then the bird fell into the sea. You killed the bird. I felt so awful. I never meant to hurt the bird. The whole thing was terrible. Mr. Liffelam was screaming. He waded into the sea, picked up that bird and carried it back to the beach. He was crying and crying. I'm sorry, Mr. Liffeland. Oh, Greg. Poor guy. Oh, and that poor bird. I guess that explains why he was always so prickly. Prickly? Well, if you threw the disc into the sea... the disc. He must have got the disc off the board then, did he? There's nothing in there. Must have got it somewhere. Interesting. There it is. The blind. That's not it. That's <laughs> not the disc. Oh dear, oh dear. Coffee, there's a cup of tea. Hmm. Where's the dish? Here somewhere. Okay, let's have a look. I suspect it's in Greg's old caravan because he would have. Is that not it there? Flying disc, yeah, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Hmm. 
Interesting. It's definitely here somewhere. I mean, that is a disc. Flying disc. Interesting. Well, I've gone over my time. I just need to get the last disc. Come on, golly. You've got this. Maybe, maybe she has it still in her tent. Jeez. Fights me. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Anybody who dropped in? Thanks, Miss Kenya. I hope you got a nice sleep. Cheerio.